Hey people, Brighton Rider 750. Is it worth it? I've had it for six months, would I buy it again? Not at the original price. I think the original price is a bit high for what it's too close to the other units. But now I've seen prices down about 30% from when they came out. So it was about, I don't know, 300 US when they came out with the full, you know, heart sensor and all that sort of thing. But now, get around the, let me get them for cheaper, you know, 30% cheaper, you know, two, just over 200 bucks, 230, 240 on deals. Definitely worth it for that. What I've enjoyed the most is the more icons you can put on a screen. Uh, my favorite unit is the 420. If you don't need maps, get the 420 hands down. Simple data, simple display, easy to see, cheap with a long battery life. Does everything except for, uh, yeah, it doesn't do the maps very well. Some stupid breadcrumb thing. If you need maps, then this is still a viable option. Now that it's cheaper, I almost recommend it. I wouldn't buy it again. I don't need the maps. I just get a 420. But, uh, yeah, the navigation's pretty cool, but you have to have your phone paired for navigation, right? But that's not a big deal. I always have my phone. Yeah, it does turn by turn. You can just place a point where you want to go. It's cool. It's usable. You can see it. The screen's big enough. It's not too big, that kind of thing. Uh, if you load a map, okay, and you don't have your phone with you, but you've loaded a map, you can. St it'll still do turn by turn on that route. If you go off-road, it'll say off-road. You can join back on to the, you can see the little path on the screen and you'll get your turn by turn back. So if you don't have a phone and you want to do turn by turn, just preload a map. You won't get turn by turn or rerouting, but yeah, it'll, it'll be there. Or you can just have the map screen on and it'll just simply show you not really much street data, but main roads and main road names, just whatever's off of uh, the open screen maps. So you don't need to use your phone, but if you do, you got some cool extra features. Uh, but again, it's a touch screen. Now don't be buying it for this touch screen crap. Like it's not that responsive. Like I, you gotta push it a little harder. You know, I honestly think the touch screen's more for setup, right? Like if you wanna go into the settings, uh, that sort of thing, you know, blah, blah, blah. Settings, where is it here, I guess. You can change some things, look at your old rides, but it's just easier for setup. Once you're actually in the ride, you can, you just you're just gonna flip through the screens it's easier to push a button than to be scrolling so yeah the button is what you'll use after it's set up so I'm not gonna knock on the screen that much you know it's not super responsive but like you only really kind of use it for setup or just poke a few things but what you'll find is you'll use it a lot at first so you might be oh man I wish it was like my smartphone but when you get everything set up you sort of just tend to leave it and maybe make a few changes here and there um, yeah, you'll just be scrolling through with the button. Obviously, it's, that's faster than sliding it with your finger. You want to be paying attention to the road. So maybe the GPS. Now, I've always found like sometimes it'll connect quick and sometimes it takes like four minutes to connect to GPS. But that's because I haven't really tried. I just went on the Galileo one. Just like it'll do all of them. But I think if I took time and uh, you know, obviously tried different satellite networks. You know, I just stuck it on the first one. So I'm kind of lazy. It works. It works good once it's going. It's locked in and, and pretty accurate. So, so yeah, that's about it. I think the price was high. And it wasn't so slick, but it does do everything. And the screen does look good. So battery is pretty good on it, too. It's pretty long. It'll go all day. I don't worry about it. Leave maps on, whatever. I'll get my day out of it. Whatever. I think I said in the other video full battery I mean it's two full rides like if I I crank everything to the max you know I don't like turning on the backlight I like just always on uh, always have my two screens the map screens always going you know I'll go out for four or five hours get home and it's still over half battery so it's like it's an all-day device with everything cranked so I'm not I don't even worry about the battery if it's half I'll still go out for a ride and I'll come back not, not too much worry I usually charge it when it gets about a quarter. Whatever. All right, so yeah, it's good at the price. Look for a good deal. Don't pay full price. Don't pay that 300 bucks or whatever they want it for. I think you're getting too close to those premium, ultra premium ones. That, yeah, just a bit smoother overall. They don't do anything. This doesn't, but they're smoother. So as far as my recommendation, at the right price, it's sort of like the do everything, at every, every feature you'd ever need. Not perfect, but good.
you know so you put that in that 200 and 220 price point no one's gonna spend any more money you know you just learn these little tricks to get it to work perfectly and it's like it's, it does everything the top end ones do long battery screens good what else do you need that's kind of what everybody's asking for uh, take it easy mm. Any questions? I usually just make a video if somebody asks me a question. I've run out of ideas. I have no imagination. Bye-bye.